Hi, it's Ifi Chuksadizwe again of ChebeChocity.com and the author of The Uncommon Woman book. You're welcome to a new episode of The Uncommon Woman Show, the place to be to birth and grow into the woman of your dreams, the woman God had in mind when he created you. Today we're going to be talking about prayer. Interesting, right? And so I've gotten a couple of questions and people ask, how do I pray? It's not like as if I don't know how to pray, but really, how do I pray? What's an easier way to pray? How do I know that I'm praying at right? So today I'm going to be sharing with us how to pray from Matthew 6, where Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. And um, before we go into it, it's important for you to understand that prayer is a two-way communication between yourself and God. It's not one way, so it's not you just talking, talking, talking. It's two way. You talk and then you wait to hear what he's going to say. The second thing to note is that prayer is not about the number of words or the number of big words you use. It's a heartfelt discussion with your father. So you're not under any pressure. Um, it should just come naturally, like uh, as though you were talking to your father. Okay. So step one in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Typically, when I start out praying, the first thing I do is really to exalt God. He's our Father. He's in heaven. He's higher than us. He's higher than everything upon the earth. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the I am that I am. He's the great and mighty God. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah El Shaddai. He's Jehovah Elohim. He is our great provider. He is the all-sufficient God. He's the one that created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. So this is giving him praise. This is exalting his name, calling him his different names. And that's typically how you start out in prayer. You exalt his name. You, you acknowledge the fact that indeed, you know, he's high in the heavens. His ways are not our ways. So you start out your prayer with a lot of praise and a lot of worship. There's no time limit to this. So just flow with it and just keep calling him his different names. Keep reminding, um, you know, remembering the great things that he's done. So the Lord that parted the Red Sea for the Israelites, the one that saved me from an accident, for example, when I was six, the one that healed me from a disease when everybody thought I was going to die. You know, these are all the different things you do when you're starting out uh, in prayer. Sometimes it might be helpful, you know, if you have like worship songs on that exalt him and then you just flow with it, you'll find out that you actually can stay much longer um, in this step than you expect. Step two, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Bible makes us understand that the will of God is for everyone upon the earth to come to full knowledge, to come to a knowledge of him. And so at this point, you're really praying for the kingdom. You're praying, um, as my papa puts it, you know, kingdom advancement prayers. You're praying for the kingdom of God, that everyone upon the earth will come to a full knowledge of God. You're also going to be praying for things to be on earth as it is in heaven. We know from the book of Revelations that, you know, we have the angels and we have the elders and just all worshipping God, you know, just exalting him, singing his praises. So you're, at this point, you're praying that God's will will be done on earth. The different things that he has stated, you know, his children will get to know him. People will move with power as he but said. Jesus has done these great things and greater things we will do. So his power will be alive upon the earth. That um, people will grow and live a life of worship. Everything will basically be worshiping him. At this point, you're praying kingdom advancement prayers. You're praying prayers that, you know, would advance God's kingdom upon the earth. So that's step two. Step three, give us this day our daily bread. Now, this is where you actually can start praying about things that you want. <laughs> so, you know, when it says give us this day our daily bread, one prayer that I like to say at this point is, you know, every day, because in, in Psalms it says we, we praise God who daily loads us with benefits. So there are benefits that are there already allocated for us for that day so this prayer is all about lord everything that you have allocated for me for today will find its way into my life everyone that i'm supposed to meet that is going to favor me i will meet them today every blessing that is supposed to be upon my path father order my steps to reach those blessings 
anything that's hanging in the atmosphere that is meant for me father let it fall down now into my life so give us this day our daily bread it's not just all about you know the bread that you will eat and what you will drink but it's also about you know the blessings that he has earmarked for you for today, the deliverance that he has earmarked for you and your family today, the power that he has said I am going to bequeath to you today, the kingdoms and the territories that he has said you are going to subdue today. That's what it's also all about. So you want to be specific as well and as expansive as possible when you are praying this part. Step four talks about forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. At this point, you're coming to God because indeed no man is perfect. All men have sinned and have come short of his glory. So there is some sin somewhere in you. It could be an obvious sin. It could be something that you're not mindful of. Because remember, when we sin against God, we sin against God with either our words, our actions. And when I say actions, it's either what you did or did not do. What you said or what you did not say. When you were supposed to speak, did you speak? But at this point, it's really where you come as plain as possible. And here, feel free um, to err on the side of caution. So um, at this point, I typically just you know, say, Lord, forgive me for everything. Forgive me for if I, I spoke badly to this person. I did this, I did that. Even the ones I feel I'm not sure it's a sin. I just confess everything. But it's important to note that as you ask God to forgive you for your sins, you need to be sure that everyone that has um, hurt you, you actually have forgiven the person because when you do that that's when this prayer is going to work sometimes you have people that have hurt us and then the hurt is really deep at this point is also where you pray to god to give you the grace to forgive and to forget step five lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil so lord order my footsteps as i go out today because say the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by god i will not walk into pain i will not walk into death i will not walk into Anything that has not been earmarked for me, every plan of the devil to cause me pain today, every evil plan of the enemy to truncate my blessings, to truncate my life, to you know, to hurt my family would not come to pass today. And then you begin to declare the promises of God that secure you. So what has he said concerning you? He has said that evil will not befall me, the plague will not come near my habitation. So if in a thousand fall on my left and ten thousand on my right, it shall not come near me, it shall not hurt me. So as you pray and you ask God to lead you aright and deliver you from evil, then you also start to proclaim the promises that guarantee his protection and guarantee that you know you don't actually walk into evil. Step six, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is literally where you end your prayer and you return back all the glory to God. You return back all the honor. You return back all the... You, re, you, you remind yourself in prayer and remind him as well in prayer that all the glory is his. What he lets to happen in your life at the end of the day is still all about him because if he causes the light to shine on your path, it shines on him and the kingdom as well. So you return back all the glory. Somewhere in this um, whole mix of steps, you also it's important for you to also keep quiet and listen to what God is saying to you. For me, it typically happens at any point, sometimes after the worship, before I start to pray the kingdom prayers, sometimes after I have prayed for the daily bread or for the kingdom, I just keep silent and I just listen to him to hear what he has to say to me. So now that you know all this, what are you going to do differently? I trust that your prayer life is going to be revived and fired up on a new and different level because remember, you have an assignment with your name on it. You have a people just waiting for your unique touch and you have a God that is ready to back you up. So engage him in prayer and get the best out of this relationship. As usual, if you love this video, feel free to like it, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's time to get your game face on and arise and shine brightly. Thank you.